there are there there will be no wife jokes. <laughs> Not that I told it. No. Years ago, somebody and I was teaching, and I was much younger. Um, of course, my wife is much younger. And somebody said, well, what's your wife like? And I said, well, I said, have you ever seen a 235-pound fullback? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, take off the helmet. That's my wife. Okay. Well, now, well, she knows this. So we went into a shoe store in uh, Wellsburg. And as we were walking in, one of my students came up to her and said, you're the 235-pound fullback. And she said, oh, you have my husband for class. <laughs> That's my wife, right there. <laughs> Somebody asked her, said, she's, she's not really a history person. She married one, she said, That's enough. <laughs> She said she's been married for 298 dog years. <laughs> Tonight we're going to talk about front wheeling from the outpost to entrepot. That was the word for today, was entrepot. And some of us looked it up. Young man about a couple rows back. And the definition of entrepot. Who's the dog work? It's a, in its simplest, it's a warehouse. In the case that we're looking at it, it's a, a place where you have the distribution of goods. Okay? Now, 1782, Wheeling is an outpost, westernmost place in Virginia. 81 years later, Wheeling becomes the first capital of a new state, West Virginia. Now something obviously happens in that 81 year period, and what that is, we're going to look at tonight. And we're going to start with a couple descriptions. What did Wheeling look like in 1782? Not that I was there to see it. But the uh, Wheeling in 1882 would have been where 10th and 11th streets are today. That's it. A couple houses. A fort. Not much else. Now I will read you the description of Wheeling in 1800. The town, sometimes referred to as Zanesburg. I don't know, that sounds like a good uh, <clears throat> trivia question was located in an area now bound by 8th Street in the north, 11th Street in the south, Market Street, and the Ohio River. Old Fort Henry still stood, but it was in decaying condition. Some of its wood was used for other kinds of construction. And that's not an uncommon thing. Even in um, Europe, a lot of the Roman ruins were torn down, and some of those were put into other kinds of buildings. They did the same thing in parts of, of Greece. Most of Wheeling was pasture land. Center Wheeling was an extensive orchard uh, with clearings here and there for cornfields. Twenty years later, Wheeling edged its way southward, but this part of the city, and southward means where you start down the hill on Market Street going toward the creek, was a quagmire in wet weather. Mud, 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 sometimes ankle deep, almost no paving, and maybe a sidewalk here and there. Okay? By 1836, Wheeling becomes incorporated. It becomes a very well-known town. Now, what happens 
Well, let me give you some statistics. In 1810, Wheeling's population was 914 in that census, which was an 83% increase over the census, the estimated census of 1800. In 1820, the population of Wheeling increased 71% to 1,567. In 1830, the population of Wheeling in the 1820s increased 233%. It went from 1,500 to 5,200. And in the next decade, the population increased another 68%. Now, to put that in a perspective, the last time Wheeling had an increase in its population was 1930. Okay. Now, what causes that big increase? A couple other statistics before I, I, I know I'm, the, the excitement's building. <laughs> you gotta, you know. In uh, 1840, these are the largest cities in Virginia ranked. Richmond, Petersburg, Wheeling. Not only was Wheeling the third largest city in 1840 in the state of Virginia, it was the 51st largest city in the United States. In 1850, the three largest cities are still Richmond, Petersburg, and Wheeling. But Wheeling is ranked as the 59th largest city. And at the beginning, uh, just before the end, before the beginning of the Civil War, Wheeling had dropped to fourth. Richmond, Petersburg, Norfolk, Wheeling were 63rd largest city in the United States. Wheeling will remain one of the 100 largest cities in the United States through 1900. It's the only city in West Virginia that's ever been in the top 100. And there has never been another city since then. And there now are probably hundreds, probably thousands of cities larger than uh, Wheeling. Now, what causes the transformation? Transportation. And the important ones are these, if you're taking it, notes. Water transport, roads, bridges, and railroads. Okay? The first two are the most important for getting it started. River transport and the National Road. Okay? And the fact that the National Road comes to Wheeling, it arrives here in 1818, it's the first project by the federal government to build a road. Now we take for granted, if you, if you ever watch those signs and say your tax dollars at work, pay real close attention to them. Because when they put up the um, Washington Avenue Bridge, 80% of that money came from federal dollars. They weren't state dollars. If we had to rely on state dollars to build roads in West Virginia, uh, you'd be in trouble. Because we couldn't do it. But it was a long time before we had another public highway. Uh, Presidents Monroe, Madison and Monroe both vetoed bills to extend roads because they thought it was unconstitutional. It was a, a, uh, a misuse of power. Okay? So the National Road is authorized in Jefferson's administration. And one of the reasons it, it uh, is authorized is that by 1803, Ohio becomes a state. So there are 60,000, but how do you get from Ohio to the capital? 